Good morning ladies, I hope you're well. Now if you're looking at me this morning and thinking, oh my god, she didn't do her makeup. Um, I just want to assure you that um, I have done my makeup and it's all came, come off. And as you can see, I look like I have been smacked in the face, but actually I have been crying. And before you start panicking, I don't want you to worry, um, there is a very good reason why I've been crying and it's not uh, not a problem. But I was doing an exercise this morning because um, from an astrology perspective, at the moment we're coming into a phase where we release and let go um, of anything that no longer serves us. So this morning I decided to do a release and let go meditation. And as you can see from my face, it's obviously worked. Um, I've released a lot of emotions that I thought I'd got rid of. And it, wanted, it made me want to jump online to say that our... Oh, our journey, our journey of discovery, our, our journey of, you know, releasing and let going things that no longer serve us is not a quick fix. It's not something that gets done immediately and it's done and dusted. It's something that we, we go through, we reach a point and then we release and let go something else and then that expands ourselves and then we release and let go something else. And this morning I was focusing on um, being lonely. And the reason that I was focusing on this is um, my daughter is having a few problems at school and uh, she's she's 13. And uh, for any of you that read my story in the Pay It Forward notes to my younger self, the first one, I talk about um, being 13, 14 and being bullied at school and the isolation that I felt. And one of the things that she said to me last night, because she was very, very brave, keeping an emotion, I mean, you know, to the point that I was starting to worry about her, until I asked one question, and I said, are you lonely? Sorry. And she said, yeah. And it made me realise how many years that I spent being lonely, feeling that nobody got me. And although at the time it was excruciatingly painful I needed to go through that to set up women of contribution because I am so passionate about women not feeling that emotion not feeling lonely sorry and um, I just wanted to jump on really to say that everything that we go through leads us to a point everything that we go through gets us to a point where we are ready to make a stand. We're ready to say, uh-uh, no more. And um, we're ready to build or create or help or support others so that they don't go through the pain, the upset, the experience, whatever it may be that we went through ourselves. Now, we can't take away people's pain. And it took me a long time to realize that we can't take away people's pain. I thought I could save everybody. Um, but we can support them on their journey. And that's what Women of Contribution is about. It's, it's about providing a safe space so that women can be themselves without fear of others criticizing, where we're not lonely. And, you know, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a mum, whether you're, you know, a, a CEO of a company, it can sometimes be really, really lonely out there if you don't surround yourself with the right people. And people talk about finding your tribe, but that in itself is bloody difficult. You know, where do you go where you can be yourself and somebody's not there ready to cut your legs under you for, for saying something that's wrong or, you know, um, putting something wrong on your post or, or what people's perception is of wrong. But I just wanted to jump on really to say that it, this is a safe space. This is a space where you won't be criticized for who you are. You won't be lonely. Hopefully, you won't be lonely. Um, but there is a caveat. We do need to show up. We will always be lonely if nobody knows that that's how we're feeling. We will always feel unsupported unless we tell people, actually, do you know what? I need some help right now. And as women, we are notoriously bad for saying, do you know what? I need some help. And if you listen to um, the interview that I did with Gosha this week, um, 
you know, she said, being able to put your hand up and say, this is what I need. You know, this is what I need right now. Why, why do we feel that we can't say this is what we need right now? And I know why. Because in the past, we would have asked for what it is we needed. And somebody, maybe without even thinking, would have cut our legs out from underneath us. They would have discouraged the remark. They would have put down what it was that we asked for. They would have dismissed what it is that we asked for. And that in itself sets a cycle of us not being able to say, this is what I need. And I needed, up until this point, a group of women that got me, that didn't give a shit what I looked like. And you can see this morning, um, I don't give a shit. And if you saw um, one of my miracle mornings where I had no makeup on and my head in a turban, I didn't give a shit. Um, being able to step forward in whatever way that you're feeling and for people to accept you as you are. Now, I don't want to come on here and be a crybaby at all, but I am so passionate about women not feeling that way. We don't need to. We don't need to. But we do need to take responsibility and we do need to put our hand up and say, we need help. We need help. So, sorry, I thought I'd cleared all this uh, before I even got on. So apologies for that. So what I would like you to do is if you are feeling lonely, if you are feeling disconnected, if you are feeling that nobody gets you for who you are right now, know that this, that here, you have that safe space. That here, you can ask for help and you won't be discouraged and you won't be dismissed. You can ask for the help that you need and there will be people here that will say, yes, 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 I'm here to help you. Tell us what you need and I will do it. Because that is what being a woman of contribution and collaborating is all about. It's not about cutting people's legs down because they're on their own journey and they've said a sentence out of out of line and I saw a post this morning on um I think it was Lewis Howes actually and he was talking about the toxicity of masculinity and people were slating him and I haven't read the whole article but men and women are finding their place in this world at the moment and the world is being turned on its head because if you think about it the old style of the world is 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 going you know the old style where women were objectified and they were um you know belittled and they were paid less than men all of that is starting to go um not quick enough obviously but um it's starting to go and people are stepping up and saying, uh-uh, no more. But at the same time, as women, we need to give compassion to the men because the men are now having to find their way in the world. And if you think about it, I'm not saying for one minute that the men's experiences and women's experiences are the same because they're not. But Men out there have been going through their own challenges too. I just look at my my son who said to me one day when I asked him, you know, whether boys and girls can show the same emotion. And he said, definitely not, mummy. You know, if I show sadness, I, I have my friends tell, telling me to, you know, man up and not be a baby. So, you know, these men have grown up in this world where actually they have had a whole emotion set cut out from from them being able to show because society has deemed that it's not acceptable and the knock-on effect of that and I'm not saying that the stuff that's going on between men and women at the moment is because of that but it has to have a contributing factor so what I was trying to say is that both men and women are trying to find their way and sometimes when we're finding our way like Lewis Howes we might say things as our, our thinking is starting to awaken and is starting to grow and it's starting to, to um, go for, forward into the world. We may say things wrong. We may, you know, things might come out of our mouths that aren't 
as we expect them. But we shouldn't slate people. We should raise awareness that maybe there was a better way to say it, but also give them compassion, the same compassion that we would want from our, you know, from, from other people to us. And I think that compassion seems to be lost, completely lost. I don't understand where it's gone. You know, if we believe that we are all linked in some way or another, then when we do that to somebody else, we're essentially doing it to ourselves. And actually, let's honor people on their journey. Yes, we should definitely shout them out if they're doing stuff that, you know, is unacceptable. We really should raise awareness. You know, the Me Too movement showed that. But at the same time, let's give them some compassion on their journey. Let's work on the principle that it is a common humanity factor that we will fuck up, that we will fail, that we will say things and do things that might not be considered right. But everybody does it. Everybody does it. And actually, there are different ways to help people on their journey and belittling and teasing and making other people feel isolated is not one of them. So, like I say, I seem to have gone a big circle here. Um, uh, um, oh, yes. Being open and broken and being loved anyway, as it's okay to be real. It is. It is okay to be real. And I am fed up with seeing fake people out there. You know, um, those so-called experts that are saying, do you know what? I'm completely healed. There's nothing wrong with me. I'm the expert. And yeah, shit, the experts are still going through their shit. You know, every time you release and let go, release and let go. I do remember in positive psychology, um, one of our professors, an amazing, amazing man, talked about the fact that as, you know, as a uh, as psychologist, we have to work on our shit. We have to work on our shit cons consistently. And the reason being is when we release and let go, it has less chance of influencing the, the actions that we have with a client. And, you know, I mean, just on Monday, I um, worked with uh, an amazing lady called Farah on RTT. Um, and she put me in a hypnotic state to work on a particular issue that I knew that would that had been coming up on a regular basis. Just because I'm an expert on, on a particular area does not mean that I don't have my own shit to work through. Of course I do. And I'm releasing and let going, releasing and let going. And during that process, I'm finding quicker and easier ways that I can help my clients. So today, I didn't mean to come on and um, burst into tears. Um, but it, it, it is what it is. I, you know, I'm not going to apologize for it. It is what it is. Um, but I just want to implore you two things moving forward today is, one, you do not need to be lonely. You do not need to feel isolated. You do not need to be in a situation where um, you feel like you're all alone. You don't need to be. There are people out there. You just need to be active in finding those people. And when you find those people, oh my God, it feels amazing because you feel fully supported. And secondly, if you need help, friggin' ask for it. People aren't mind readers. They're not readers. Whether you need that help from your partner, whether you need that help from, from me, whether you need that help from someone within this group, ask for the help. I will say there is a way to ask for help. Um, in the past, I would normally ask for help from my, my partner, my husband, when things got so bad. And it normally came out as, oh, for God's sakes, can't you see that I need some help? And he'd just be like, well, if that's the way that you're asking, then, you know, no. Um, so there is a way to ask. But you know what? It's not a failing to ask for help. It's not a, you know, it doesn't make you small asking for help. And actually, we do. Why wouldn't we ask for help? You know, if you look at some of the ancient tribes, they work in harmony. They know that one person's better at something than them, and they, they, don't, they don't think about whether or not to ask them. They know that if they ask them, there is such a gift from the, for the person that's being asked, because then they have the gift to say yes. 
or no, depending on what, what the situation is. But there is nothing nicer than somebody coming to you and saying, do you know what? My back feels like it's up against the wall. I just really need some help with this. Can you help me? Of course, yes. Of course. How that would be given would be different for each person. You know, if you're asking for my right arm, then maybe not. But if, if there's something I can do to help you, why wouldn't I? So I found it as I knew when I met you a year ago, but now ready. Yes, thank you. Now, I'm not sure how I'm pronouncing your name. I'm really sorry. I'm with my head fug at the moment. I really haven't got a clue. Is it Hoke? I'm pretty sure it's Hoke. Um, so yes, just today, just do two, two things for me. If you're feeling lonely and isolated, just put your head above the parapet and say, me. Just that single word, me. And I will know that you're feeling isolated and lonely. And we will do whatever we can do to help you not feel that way. We might not be able to do anything, but actually knowing that we're here and we've got your back, we've got your back. And also, if you need some help, please, 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 just ask for some help today. Just put your hand up and say, I need some help. And then tell us, because we would love to be able to support you in any way that we can. Joe K, am I pronouncing it right? Joe K, we will find out. <laughs> I hope so, because with a name like Kazia, everybody always gets it wrong, and there is nothing worse than people getting your name wrong. So, um, yes, it appears that I've got Joe K, sorry. Uh, wonderful, I've got the name right. So, I'm not going to apologise for crying at all in any way, shape or form. Um, it's because I'm so passionate about making sure that nobody ever feels the way that I felt like when I was being bullied in school, the way that my daughter feels at this moment in time um, where she feels totally isolated, that she has no friends, that she can't be herself, that she is not accepted for who she is. Because we will have our people that we really like and we will have people that we don't. Um, and that's absolutely fine. It's just finding those ones that truly make your heart sing, that will accept you on your good days and your bad days, your makeup days or your not so much makeup days, um, you know, your happy days and your sad days and just accept you for who you are. So on this Friday, have an amazing day and thank you for listening to me blub on. Um, and I hope it helps even just one of you out there that's feeling a bit eh today. So have a wonderful weekend and I'll speak to you next week. Bye bye.